Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm bringing you guys a brand new catch-up review segment where I get to talk about several albums released this year that I didn't have a chance to cover in full whenever they drop for one reason or another. So essentially I'm just going to be going through these three different projects I'm talking about today, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on them briefly, and uh, yeah, that's really all there is to this video, uh, like all my other catch-up review videos. And before we get started with the actual reviews, just want to say, as I always do in the start of these videos, it's all just my personal opinion, so if you happen to disagree, that's fine. Leave your own opinion in the comments section down below if you want to share your own thoughts on these projects. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get started with the first project I want to talk about here today, this new self-titled album from Astronoid. Overall, I decided to check out this album because I heard about some positive things being said about it. I wasn't familiar with this group prior to the release of this project, and I still have not heard their first album or any other music that they've released outside of this album, so I can't speak for any of that. But I heard that this band had an, an interesting mix of like post-metal, post-rock, and shoegaze on this thing. And those are all genres I like to some extent at the very least. And I, I've liked music that's combined those sounds before, so I was hoping to you know like this project as well between that and the fact that I heard some positive talk about this thing. But uh, overall, I, I really didn't end up caring for this album all too much, to be completely honest. And a lot of uh, my not really caring for this boils down to one simple attribute about this album. And that is that I just find this thing really boring for the most part. And I get that the genres of music that the band pulls from on this thing are, you know, supposed to be very spacey. They're supposed to be a bit repetitive at times as well. But I still feel like this album isn't really that interesting at all. I've heard albums in the genres that this band pulls from when it comes to their sound that also have projects that are very spacey or repetitive to some extent, but even those projects have more you know, distingu distinguishable qualities between the different tracks on them and things of that sort. Like, I really can't say anything specific about any of the tracks here that are necessarily positive or negative just because I feel like this album as a whole just kind of blurs together into one big song. And I get that maybe if you're just in the mood for some very spacey, very atmospheric, very vibe-focused music, that you know, you might enjoy something like this, because that's pretty much what you're getting on this thing from start to finish. But for me, it just kind of ends up coming out like this big blob of really indistinguishable tracks that just kind of blend together into one big mass of uninteresting music. I mean, the performances across this project are pretty solid through and through. I wouldn't say there's any attributes to that that I actively dislike, really. I think the vocals on this thing are kind of interesting, to be honest. Uh, the singer of the band has this sort of higher-pitched kind of singing, if you will. It almost sounds like something that's more appropriate for, like, a pop-punk band, but it works with the sound that the band has going for them in an interesting way, to say the le least, and I mean that in a positive sense. It's pretty interesting overall. I just wish that it was interesting enough to you know, work for the entire length of this album because it's like one very minor interesting thing that happens across this uh, you know, pretty standard length of an album. While I like the actual vocals themselves on this thing, I'm not the biggest fan of how they're actually kind of mixed into the album. They sound like they're being sung like at a distance significantly farther away than like where the rest of the instruments are playing in the mix, kind of like I'm in a tunnel listening to this and the band surrounding me but the vocalist is like a few meters away it just it's kind of annoyed me while listening to this thing i could see something like this working for this very spacey atmospheric kind of sound that this band is going for but it, it didn't really work for me i guess it just kind of annoyed me while i was listening to this thing overall this is an album that you know i i did not care for all too much but i can understand why a lot of people out there could really care about something like this. It's definitely a type of music that if you're in, in the mood for something that's really atmospheric or vibe focused or just spacey, something to like relax to but at the same time is, you know, metal and kind of heavy, then this is something that could interest you overall. It just didn't really interest me all too much. Like I said, the performances across this thing are pretty solid. The singing and the, the vocals on this thing are pretty solid as well, with the exception of how they're kind of mixed into the album, I guess. But uh, yeah, this album just did not interest me a whole ton. What little interesting things were going on in this thing and the, uh, the pretty solid 
you know, uh, instrumental skills on display here weren't really enough to save this project for me from being just a really boring listen, pretty much. All the cuts on this thing just kind of blended together for me. But yeah, just my own personal opinion there. Moving on, though, let's talk about the new album from Ariana Grande, Thank You, Next. Now, considering that I'm a human being who doesn't live under a rock, I'm familiar with who Ariana Grande is. Though I've never really been super, you know, drawn to her music, really. Not that I've hated it at any point. I just haven't really been super excited about it either. Though I did hear a, a significant amount of positive things being said about her last album, Sweetener, that was released last year. And eventually I did decide to check it out. Uh, though it, it did kind of come after the end of last year, hence why I never got to cover it in a catch-up review or anything like that. But overall, I, I think it's a pretty good album overall, Sweetener. I think it's a pretty solid project. Not something that would have ended on my best of the year list or anything like that, but still a pretty solid listen through and through. I kind of regret not getting to it last year, or at the very least not being able to cover it in some kind of review. But uh, yeah, having heard that thing... I was, you know, looking forward to hearing this new album from Ariana just a few months later. And overall, I have heard some pretty mixed opinions on this album. I know some people out there like this a lot more than Sweetener. I've heard some people like it a lot less than Sweetener. I guess I'm kind of in the minority here when I say that I think it's kind of, you know, equal in quality to Sweetener, really. I mean, if I had to pick between the two, I'd probably pick Sweetener just because I think it's slightly better but you know more generally speaking i think these two albums are about equal to one another in terms of quality though a kind of interesting thing about this album at least to me is that it's not about the same quality as the last album because you know ariana just kind of stagnated uh, in terms of quality this album definitely changes some things up it improves on some problems i had with sweetener but at the same time it introduces some other problems that weren't present on that album either so in, in that regard it's it's a bit interesting but overall i think that this is you know like, like sweetener a pretty decent project overall there's things to this album i like but at the same time there's aspects that i don't really care for all too much i like the fact that overall this album is a lot more uh focused and even somewhat conceptual compared to sweetener uh, I, the flow of this album definitely feels a lot more well orchestrated. The production on this thing is a lot more consistent throughout. There were several moments on Sweetener that, you know, just kind of felt like detours when it came to the production and the overall sound of the track. Not the case with this album for the most part. Everything on here sounds pretty consistent. And the lyrics on this album also really do help tie things together as well dealing with topics such as Ariana kind of reflecting on herself when it comes to things like relationships things of that sort. Uh, it makes for a pretty entertaining listen. It's definitely a bit deeper than your typical pop album, if you will. And I'm not going to go out and say that, you know, this is one of the deepest, most personal albums I've ever heard or anything like that. I've heard plenty of songs out there that kind of do the same topics of what's present on this thing, but, you know, a bit better. But overall, for, for a pop album, it, it does a pretty solid job and it's pretty consistent as well. It really helps tie together uh, this album from start to finish it makes it feel really cohesive. The singing is another aspect of this album that I feel is just consistently strong throughout, though that's not necessarily a new thing here on this project because I feel like that was the same case on Sweetener. And there's a lot of really catchy hooks on this thing as well, especially on tracks like Bloodline and Bad Idea. Uh, just hooks that, you know, really stand out and are quite catchy, which for a pop record, you know, that's to be expected. But the fact that everything surrounding it is pretty nice, uh, makes for a really enjoyable package at the end of the day. Uh, these tracks are overall ones that I could definitely see myself coming back to. But while this album certainly does, like I said, either improve on some things from Sweetener or just kind of keep some of the strong points about that album and kind of carry them over into this one, there's also some aspects about this album that I just don't really think work all that nicely or are just downgrades from Sweetener. While I do feel like the production on this thing is definitely more consistent sounding and more cohesive overall, I do think it comes at the expense of sounding a lot less interesting. The production on Sweetener at times could be a bit more experimental, a bit more out there, a bit more quirky, mostly thanks to Pharrell and some of his contributions to the production there. The production here on this album is just a lot more typical you know, at least when it comes to the sound that's popular right now, it's very trap influenced. It's very just modern. It's just kind of standard, I guess you could say, and kind of uninteresting. 
it's not necessarily that any of the production on this thing is outright terrible or anything. I don't think there's a, a beat on this thing that's really awful or anything. It's just that it's just kind of there and just kind of uninteresting for the most part. It's easily the least standout aspect in all of these tracks, really, which is kind of a shame considering that this project overall, like I said, lyrically feels, you know, a lot more personal than Sweetener, but the production on here just feels so generic and basic and normal sounding that it doesn't really feel like it matches up very nicely with the very personal feel that the rest of the album is shooting for. It just kind of sounds like it, Ariana has taken her most personal uh, record and just drenched it in these very typical trap influence instrumentals uh, to make it more accessible, which is, you know, the, the two don't really pair up all that nicely, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Aside from the production on this thing being not super interesting to me, there's just some cuts on this album that overall don't interest me a whole ton. Tracks like Needy or Makeup don't really do a whole lot for me. I mean, they're not terrible songs by any means, they're just not super interesting either. I really don't have strong feelings towards them at all. The only cut on this album that I would say I don't like to some extent is the track Seven Rings, which sees Ariana trying to do this kind of rap-like delivery on the track that I don't really feel suits her all that nicely. I mean, it definitely could have gone worse than what we actually end up getting on the track, but considering I feel like her singing voice is one of the most consistently strong points about her as an artist, the fact that she kind of abandons it here on this track in favor of something that she's not anywhere near as good at, uh, it doesn't end up producing one of the more interesting tracks in her discography, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Or, I mean, I, I guess it is somewhat interesting, but not in a good way, I guess. Not, not, not an awful song, not like a worst of the year song or anything quite like that, but it's not one that I care for from this thing, to be honest. Probably the song I'm least likely to come back to out of anything on this album. But overall, despite some complaints I have with this album, I think it's a pretty s decent pop album at the end of the day. I like the fact that it's more consistent sounding and more conceptual than a uh, sweetener that she put out before and probably any of the other albums that she put out prior to that can't speak from experience because i haven't listened to any of those albums in full but just based on other people's reaction to this thing i'm, I'm just going to go out and say that this is probably her most consistent album thematically overall i like a lot of her performances across this album I think there's a lot of great catchy moments on this thing as well. I just really wish that the production on this thing was a bit more quirky, a bit more interesting, and just had a lot of, you know, maybe a bit more effort put into it, I guess, because it easily is the least interesting aspect of this entire album. And I feel like if you were to replace a lot of the instrumentals on this thing with some more interesting and quirky instrumentals, maybe something at least equal to the oddness of some of the cuts from Sweetener, then this album could have been, you know, a great album, to be honest, because uh, at least on Ariana's end, things are were looking pretty solid for the most part on this thing. But yeah, decent pop album overall. If, if you, you're looking for a pop album to check out, this is one that I feel is definitely worth, you know, giving a listen to. All right, moving on, the final album that I'm going to talk about here today is the newest record from Shushu, Girl With Basket of Fruit. Now, I've heard great things about Shushu for... A good while now I just haven't gotten around to checking out anything from this group until this album came out uh, and you know listening to this album for the first time uh, I, I immediately regretted not checking out this group sooner because this the, at least at the very least this album because this is the only album I've heard from them so far but the very least this album here is definitely something that appeals to a lot of my taste it's weird and quirky and dark in all the ways that I tend to like my music. Overall, I really ended up loving this project. If I had to describe this album in one word, I would say it's unsettling, just because this thing is so dark and creepy and nightmare-inducing that it makes the Daughters album that came out last year look really happy and upbeat by comparison. The overall sound of this album pulls from a lot of different electronic elements. However, it's always done so in such a way that being able to tell exactly what's going on with these instrumentals at times can be a bit difficult to do. It just adds a really strange foreign nature to a lot of these instrumentals and ends up making them feel even creepier than they already are. The opening track on this album, the title track, has some really strange lyrics going on it that are just kind of unsettling. I feel like, for example, every frog hops right into her butthole. 
every frog eats a single butthole flea on its way in. Like, what what are the lyrics on this track? And that's just one example of some really strange and out there lyrics that pop up on this thing. And the delivery of these lyrics is really frantic. It's almost poetic with how it's delivered at the same time, though. Feels kind of artsy, but at the same time, really nightmare-inducing and frantic and off the wall. Really strange opening track, but it's not even one of the darker or more, more disturbing moments on this thing. The track Pumpkin Attack on Mommy and Daddy is another strange, but at the same time, dark moment on this thing. The track features this very dark, driving, electronic beat to it that's kind of catchy and earwormy, but at the same time, very disturbing at the same time. You have these really odd vocal samples that pop up on this track every so often that just add to the unsettling nature of it. A really strange track, like much of this album, but one that I find myself enjoying a whole ton. Probably my favorite cut from this entire album. The track, The Wrong Thing, that immediately follows this song is, at first, something that seems like a bit of a breather track on the album. It's a lot less in your face than a lot of the previous cuts on this album. It's a lot more toned back. Uh, there's The singing on this track is a lot more, you know, beautiful, but kind of, at the same time, very frail sounding. The atmosphere of this track is still pretty dark, though, I will say. Despite the fact that I did say it was kind of like a breather track, it still is really unsettling especially towards the end of the song where it just seems to kind of morph into this very like demonic sounding piece of music you have what kind of sounds like this very low pitched laugh being repeated throughout this outro part of the song or at least i think it sounds like a laugh I, i'm not a hundred percent sure but it, it kind of just sounds like if you were to get lost in the woods at night and you, you heard this behind you and you turn around like you'd see some kind of monster as a demon behind you laughing in this really low register that's what it sounds like pretty much and it's just downright disturbing and then the track that immediately follows this one mary turner mary turner is another highlight here on the album a uh, track that talks about the lynching of Mary Turner and uh, this track here it really showcases the, the very dark nature of you know lynching and what that was all about really there's no track that I've heard at the very least that's been able to capture the really horrific nature of that and put it into track form so accurately I guess you could say because this track just sounds downright horrifying really you have these drums that sporadically come in just pounding away the vocal delivery on this thing kind of like on the opening is track is kind of like poetic and almost spoken word like but at the same time sounds really frantic and off the wall too it just kind of fills you with this sense of dread which given what this track is about i mean like i said this track is a pretty pretty terrifying depiction of lynching and all of what that was about really overall really unsettling listen especially you know, amongst all the other tracks here in this album, which is really saying something given how unsettling a lot of the cuts on this album end up being. The closing track to this album, Normal Love, is probably the most, you know, you know, the least dark sounding cut on this entire thing. The most stripped back, the most calm sounding overall. It's kind of what it is to this album what Hurt is to Nine Inch Nails the downward spiral, I guess, overall. The vocals on this track are really frail sounding they're just they almost sound like they're just barely hanging on but at the same time it has this very beautiful quality to it as well the instrumental to this thing is really sad though at the same time there are still some dark traces coming into the instrumental of this track as well i wouldn't say that the album you know completely changes tone here on this last track however i will say that this last song here on the album is you know less oppressively dark and more sad and melancholy overall but it, it makes for a very nice ending to the album really uh, another one of my favorite cuts on the album pretty much another thing I like about this album is that it never really ends up overstaying its welcome it's pretty short running under 40 minutes in length and all the tracks here never really feel like they're taking too long they're constantly switching up changing either to a different sound or moving on to the next track and this allows for the weirdness and the very dark atmosphere of the album to never really get old with the listener it's constantly changing it never really you never allows you to really get comfortable with what's going on and for an album like this i feel like that's for the best i will say my only complaint with this album and it is a very minor complaint 
is that I wish that the transitions between the tracks were a bit nicer overall. Like, after every track ends, you'll get like several seconds of silence before the next one kicks off. It kind of feels like all these tracks were made and kind of exist in their own bubble as opposed to, you know, existing in this larger album format, which is kind of disappointing. I wish they flew together a bit nicer than they actually do because those few seconds in between every track are just kind of annoying in my opinion. I want to move on to the next track because the next track is always really great and exciting. Once again, really minor complaint at the end of the day, but one that I still do have. But overall, this is a fantastic album, one of my favorites of the year so far, and one that I feel like definitely has the potential to end up on my best of the year list and pretty highly on that list at that. Overall, not an album for everyone, I will say that if you're not into more experimental, weird, or dark sounding music. This album probably isn't for you, but if you do like that stuff, like I do, then I think you'll really like this album, or at the very least, get some enjoyment from it, because, you know, this album definitely has all those qualities to it. Overall, yeah, I really love this album. And with that said, that concludes this catch-up review. Uh, if you guys want to share your own thoughts on any of these albums I talked about here today, as I said before, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content, things like album reviews, track reviews, things of that sort. So if you want to see more of that, make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching once again, and stay golden.